the biblical truth of our hymns. I'm glad we have a Bible. Today, while shepherds watch their flock. And we're almost going to get right. But almost counts in horseshoes. If you come just close to the pole on the ground, you get points. But close doesn't come to the Bible. It's either what God said or what man or Satan has said. And it can look right. But if we don't bring out the scales and weigh what the Bible says and whatever we're looking at. See, the Bible is the exact measurement, scales of all life. Where it's to take whatever we want to do and see what the Bible says about it. If the Bible says no, we're not to do it. If the Bible says yay, we're to do it. The Bible says rightly divide, study. I mean, the Bible says to a man, go build an ark and gather every pair of animals. I'm not to do that. For me, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now, while shepherds watch their flocks, the writer, the words are from Nathan Tate. And one of the things I want to do, I have always want to do, is I want to look at the person who wrote it. And we're going to get in a little detail about Nathan, Nahum, Tate, shall we? All right, first of all, about this, it's the, it's the only Christian Christmas hymn, I almost said Christmas, Christian, forgive me, authorized to be sung by the Anglican Church before the 1700s. Only before that time where only the songs of the Psalms of David were permitted to be sung. So this had to get permission in the Anglican Church. Professor Jeremy Dibble of Durham University has noted that while shepherds watched was the only Christmas hymn to be approved by the Church of England, Anglican, in the 18th century, and this allowed to be circulated across the country with the Book of Common Prayer. All right. Jesus told us we're not to have a Book of Prayer. We're not to recite prayers. This was because most carols, which had root in folk music, were considered too worldly and thus not used in church services until the 18th century. Oh, I'll give the Church of England some credit <laughs> that the Baptist Church in 2018, if it was worldly music, it was not allowed. So, all right. Nahum Tate. He lacked great talent, but wrote much for the stage. Oh, I've been in churches where the altar is now called stage. Adapting other man's works. He's taking what people have worked and working himself and putting a name to it. Really successful only in the version of King Lear, which was Shakespeare. Spent most of his life in a futile pursuit of popular favor. I'm not even in the hymn yet, the carol. Probably stricken through much of his life, he died in Mint at Southwark, where he had taken refuge from his creditors. Tate was Irish and moved to London in his 20s. Quickly becoming known as a drum, dr dramist, drama. This guy would be great for your teen group. This guy would be well known for your vacation Bible, dramas and poet. Tate was the man who rewrote Shakespeare's King's Lear to give it a happy ending. Oh. He omitted the character of the fool altogether and ended the play with the marriage of Igor and, and Cordell, whoever. I don't know. So this guy has taken a play written by D. Shakespeare, and he has changed Shakespeare. And we're going to see this man take a hymn out of the Bible, and we're going to see him change God, as he done with Shakespeare. 
This guy has roots of changing what people is wrote. He also worked together with John Dryden on the second half of Dryden's long poem, Absalom and Actupo. Act he spelled it wrong. So I'm trying to say how they said it. That's not how the Bible said it. All right, ready? Can we have the drum roll, please? Even though I don't allow drums. Tate also wrote the words to Henry Purcell's famous opera, Diddo, I gotta be careful I say that one, and Enos, 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 gotta be careful of that one too. Now let me describe what Tate wrote in this opera. Some interesting things on this opera before we get to Wild Shepherds Watch Their Fly. Let's look at the source. Let's look at the foundation. My salvation is built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ and the apostles. Let's see what this carol is. You guys ready for this? Ready? Act two, scene one. All right, take it. The cave of the sorceress. That's crickets you hear. It is. The sorceress or sorcerer is plotting the destruction of Carthage and its queen and summons companions to help with evil plans. Is this the writer that you want to put in a Christian hymnal? Ditto and Aeneas, I don't know how to say it, Synopsis, preface. Ready? Pobius, the sun god, rises from the sea in his solar chariot. I'm glad he didn't need batteries. I mean, coming out of the sea with batteries electrically, <laughs> he's gone, electrocuted. Act one. The Trojan hero, Aeneas, whatever his name, has managed to save his young son, Astrotus. I don't know these things. And carry his father from the ruins of burning Troy. Zeus has commissioned him to sail to Italy. Zeus? And we're going to write a hymn about God and Jesus Christ, and we've got swords. This is the. Oh, I can't see the other guy. What's the other guy's name? Everybody. Uh, oh, boy. What's his name? Chronicles and nothing. Can't think of his name. Everybody likes to write, but they don't realize the guy's in writing witchcraft and sorceries and all that in the name of God across. Uh, where was I? Act three. The Trojans are preparing for their departure. The witches rejoice when they see the discolored queen. Ditto feels that the gods have punished her. You want to have children get up to sing while shepherds watch their flocks and then try to scold them for reading magic and sorcery and all that? Nahum Tate was born in Dublin and came from a family of Puritan clerics. <laughs> the Puritans would not allow this. Faithful T, Tate, that's his father, moved to England. Now, this is about his father. He was a preacher of the gospel at Sudbury from 1654 to 1658. Evidently, his son did not take in to what his father preached. Tate, this is the guy now, Nahum, published volumes of poems in London in 1677 and became a regular writer for the stage. That's kind of interesting. I hope it's interesting that the fact is, uh, what's this mess doing in, in our hymnals? Now, let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 2, shall we? It's about the birth of Jesus. We ought to have a standard when we, because it's going to look good. See, if I close my Bible, I'm going to close my Bible. And then I go to the hymn, and I say, oh, that sounds so biblical. And if I open my Bible to Luke chapter 2, excuse the sarcasm on this. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and when I go with the Bible, what we're reading, ooh, how bad it looks. So what we're going to do is we're going to go Bible and hymnal. The biblical truth of our hymns. Am I correct? I'm correct. My mouse is in the way. All right, so here we go. While shepherds watch their flock by night. Let's go over here. Oh. 
Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Ooh, he said, oh, oh, see that? Look, there's nothing wrong with that. All seated on the ground. Okay. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The glory of the Lord shone around about that. I don't see anything about seating. I don't know where he got that revelation from. Maybe it was drama. God, I'm sitting on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down. All right. And the angel of the Lord came down upon them. All right. And glory shone round about. And the angel of the Lord came upon them. The glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were so afraid. Okay. So we got them seated. Other parts are right. Fear not, said he. Fear not. Okay, yep. Yeah. Oh, hey, look at that. For mighty dread has seized their troubled minds. Fear not, for behold, they were so afraid. And for mighty Dread has seized their troubled mind. We got to have mind because the next ending of this stanza, we got the word mankind. So we got the rhyming again. We got to have words that rhyme to great our, our, our hymn, our, our carol, our song, even though if the rhyme goes against what the Bible says. How much error to get a word to rhyme? Listen, I'm not against poetry. But. If you got to do injustice to the story of the Bible so you can get time and crime and fine and mine and you're in error. <laughs> All right. So mighty dread had seized their troubled mind. I don't know where they got that. Glad tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind. All right. Good tidings. Uh oh. We got a Bible correction here. We're a King James Bible believing church. We are solemnly upon the King James Bible and we open up a hymn that's not King James. Glad tidings. Good tidings. Of great joy. Good tidings of great joy. I bring to you and all mankind, which shall be to all people. Bible correction, Bible correction. Eh, 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 eh. King James only is the alarms going off. Eh, 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 eh. Dive, dive. Dive this him into the garbage can. It's corrected the Bible. Remember the guy who, who took Shakespeare, King Lear, which I never, I don't know have anything about it. But I assume that Shakespeare is one of them people that's great in what he does because they got college courses about him. He's highly exalted among the people of the writers of Shakespearean. That man took Shakespeare's play and changed it and put a happy ending. Why would he not take God, the great God of all, the great writer of all, God of all, God's Jehovah of the Bible, and then change his word? This Tate has already proved in history of himself to change people's work. He can't come up with his own. He couldn't make a living. He died poverty running from his creditors. All right. To you in David's town. Okay, ready? Let's, let's, let's look at the Bible. Open your Bible, King James, and follow along. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David. Unto you in David's town. This guy doesn't even know what the difference between town and city. There's a big difference. Ready? Here's the big difference. Ready? The Bible says the city of David. C-I-T-Y. City. This carol, David's town, T-O-W-N. They're not the same. 
It's a Bible correction. David's town this day is born of David's line. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I got to find where I am. The Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be the sign. All right. So let's see what we got here. The city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. And this shall be the sign. If the sign is to the shepherds. No one else comes and visits that baby that's wrapped up in a manger in swaddling clothes, even though you think there may be three wise men came to Mary, had their tail cut off. <laughs> that's a better story than what they come up with, with the nonsense they come up with changing the Bible. That sign of Jesus in the manger wrapped in swaddling clothes was a sign for them Shepherds only. All right. This shall be the sign. Jews require a sign. So those shepherds are Jews. Stanza number four, line number four. The heavenly babe. This shall be a sign. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now, his babe is capitalized. This babe is not capitalized. Dum, 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 dum. What's the problem? Let's deify Mary. Because if that baby is God, then Mary's the mother of God. You see how slick they did that? Yeah, Jesus Christ is God and Jesus Christ is, is man. That baby is, is in a realm of flesh. That baby was just born. That baby came from the womb of Mary. And we capitalize and we deify that babe. Wow. We made Mary a God. And think about what we can do every year. We can sell God as a little plastic infant baby with a 40 watt light bulb. And we can just surround ourselves on two times that people will come to church every year. That moment of, ooh, Christmas, which has nothing to do with the Bible. Christ was not born on Christmas. Don't put Christ in Christmas. He was never there. You, oh wait, the heavenly babe, you, the heavenly babe, you there shall find to human view displayed. Okay. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swollen clothes lying in a manger for human display. You know what they're saying? You ready for this? Let me ask you a question. You got three men who are walking. What are men? They're humans. He has put in the story the three wise men coming to Jesus. The human view. The 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 it's called wild shepherds. You can put the heavenly babe, you there. That sounds so stupid. There shall find to shepherds display. You can put that in there. That's perfectly biblical. But we got to put human view so we can bring the shepherds in and we can sell the three pieces of shepherds with their caramel, their caramels, with their camels. And we can sell their little goods and goodies and like that in their nativity scene and get more money. Because if we can't have a biblical uh, nativity scene, we can't make extra money on three wise men because the Bible says they weren't there. But tradition tells us that we can make an extra 25 bucks on three men in caramels. Ca camels, keep saying caramel. All right. All meanly. Wrapped in swallowing bands. All meanly? You mean Mary and Joseph were so mean they wrapped Jesus up? Is that, is that what I get from that? By the way, there's a note here. All meanly wrapped in swallowing bands. The note is swallowing bands, layers of fabric. Let's see what the Bible says, shall we? Uh, 
Wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. I don't know where they got meanly. I don't know where they got bands. In a manger laid. So swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Again, he's changed the Bible. The Bible says lie in the manger. He says manger, manger laid because laid rhymes with display. I don't know what words we could have get with manger. Manger, manger, canger, sanger, danger, danger. Hey, here we go. We should sing this carol of danger when we find Jesus in the manger. Nonsense. It does not agree with the Bible. So it's wrong. Okay, line number five. Thus spank this seraphim. Where? I'm going to read you to read Luke chapter 2 yourself and find the word seraphim. You know what injustice they just did there? Let's read. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a great Excuse me. With the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, we got to get that down. That's going to come up. Do you know what he just did by putting S-E-R-A-P-H? He removed Jesus Christ. Because you know who that angel of the Lord is in the Bible? That's Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ before he was born. The presence of Jesus Christ himself. You know what he did? He took that angel of the Lord and he made it a seraphim. You know what one of them seraphims were that's missing in heaven? The fifth one? The one that would say, I write the songs that make young people cry. I write the songs all the time. The one that has the one man orchestra in Ezekiel 28. You know, the one that's a representative of reptiles and fish. He has removed seraphim. I mean, he has removed Jesus Christ for seraphim. Now, I don't know about this, about Shakespeare, sphere, uh, sphere. I don't know about Shakespeare's pre play. I can't say Shakespeare's play. I, I never, never studied it, but it said he made a happy ending. He changed it. He has changed Jesus Christ as the angel of the Lord to a seraphim, and they're not worship. John went down to bow down before one of them. He's like, no, 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 no. Get yourself up. I don't. They're the ones that cry, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. All right. And forthwith appeared a shining throng of angels praising God. All right. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude. A multitude. Oh, oh, we got to have throng instead of multitude, because throng and song. <laughs> oh, we got to have the rhyme a time again. <laughs> Even though we sin in the beginning. So here we go, changing the Bible words because we need to get a rhyme. Over and over and over, especially with the carols. All right. Of angels praising God. So, their uh, heavenly host. So instead of throng, host, most, coast, dose, roast. Roast his song in an open fire. That's what I like to do. Very heavily praising God. All right. Uh, praising God. Oh, come on. Do I got to do this again? Really? Who thus address their joyful song? Uh, 
heavenly host praising God and say it with me, saying, S-A-Y-I-N-G. They are not singing. Boy, they got that wrong. They got to go back to kindergarten, go back to school again. Now, children, let's, let's spell song. S-O-N-G. Let's spell say. S-A-Y. They are not the same. Let's try. I am saying to you a study of the biblical truth of our hymns. You don't want me to sing. Okay? You don't want me to sing. You would say, Stiley, sing! Don't sing. All right, next. All glory be to God. All right? Glory to God. They add to all. On high. Glory to God in the highest. We can't listen that EST, that ETH, that these and thous and all that's English. That's what this guy, he's in Mario in England. And he can't even put the archaic endings to the English words. Changing the Bible. Oh, there we go again. All right. What else he's got? On high. And to the earth be peace. All right. And on earth, peace. To the earth, peace. And on the earth. So let the earth itself have peace. Let Mother Earth be at peace. You catching my drift? On earth. Who's on earth? Humans. On earth is a lot better to the earth. Be peace. And on earth, peace. Goodwill to all. Goodwill toward men. This is the Bible. He has goodwill to all. From highest heaven begin and never end ceasing. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward man, period. He stretched a couple more words between that period and men. So, we have studied from where what this man has taken, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. We have compared it with the King James Bible with the hymnal. And there was sarcasm, and there was a little humor, there was a little, but it don't match. So thus, it's wrong. God said, if a man shall add or subtract, you're in trouble. Read Revelation 22 about adding and subtracting. It's printed. Now, I, listen, I, I'm a street preacher, and there are times I will quote a verse, and I will get the verse wrong. I will be ministering to somebody with questions and answers, and I will probably get the word the word, verse wrong. In most cases, if I know I'm going to misquote the verse, I will say I, I am not quoting this verse verbatim. Uh, uh, it's not being quoted correctly. If I know in my mind and in my mouth, it's not going to come out complete. I will give a warning. This does not give a warning. This is printed. This is supposed to be a representation of Luke chapter two. It is not. It is like if I were to get a modern Bible that is printed. It is supposed to be a representative of the Word of God. And it is not. It is wrong. Now, we ought not to quote Scripture even in error. I believe we're, if we're to quote Scripture, we ought to have that Bible, King James, open and ready to follow our finger along with the words. And even if we misquote the scripture by accident, there is no excuse. I found my myself times quoting scripture, and I'll go read that scripture. Oh boy, am I wrong? And got this heart into 
the right, correct way. We got a problem with the Word of God today. I don't mean the Word of God as far as the Bible and God. We got a problem with the churches not using the Word of God, but using the Word of man and the Word of Satan. Now, why can't we just take Luke chapter 8, quote the verses, and put them words as they are in the King James Bible? Why can't we put, <coughs> excuse me, why can't we put that to a musical score? It don't rhyme. Well, not all the time. And when you pervert the Bible, it's a crime. But did you remember what I what we learned about Nahum Tate? He changed Shakespeare. He's changed God. He writes for the stage. He wrote a thing on Zeus and Sun God and Solar Disk and witches and devils and and that's in the churches today. Many years ago, I was amazed at the children when I was a Sunday school teacher. I was amazed when I would see the Facebook of the children that were in my class. I was amazed at the books that they read involved sorcery, witchcraft. And I can't think of the other guy's name. I don't even want to think about it. There it is. So what you're going to do, you're going to say, oh, oh, children, we can't sing while shepherds watch their flock. Because, you know, the guy said, you know, he, he writes his terrible books and all that. And it's against the Bible. And then you get the parents who's got a false Bible. And kids, let's go to the movies and watch this guy with a sorcerer. It's in the church. How do you know it's in the church? Because this hymn is in the hymnal. And it took me 10 minutes to look up on the internet this guy in his biography. The Bible is inherent. The Bible is exact. The Bible is perfect. The Bible is the word of God. The hymnals are written by man. And they are in error. And they are wrong. Even the greatest writers we've seen. I sat there. We were in church the other night, and we had a couple of hymns. A couple of them, like I, we didn't, we don't sing. And a couple of them was it? Hark the herald angel say! I had people looking around like, what? What was that? That's just styly there singing the hymn biblically. You sing, say. I mean, sing. You sing, sing. I say, say. I'll try to say that four times. Because the Bible says say. Do you realize some of these hymns for a Christian that's born again? Maybe a King James Bible believing Christian? Maybe a King James Bible believing Christian that goes out and tries to win souls? Maybe a Christian that, you know, he tries to do it right and he might stand at the judgment seat of Christ saying, would you do sing that? Garbage for him. wood, hay, or stubble burns up. Incinerator. Well, you know, our, our, our guy said, Get up and sing 487. If it's anti scriptural, my family look at me like, is, is, Nope, I'll just shake my head. Nope. And we sit there, and we'll open, I open it because I look at the words while they're singing in disgrace and say, Nope, that's not a hymn for us to sing. Why can't you just be quiet? Why don't you just say, God, that's not right. I want to sing a melody in your heart, your own rim, your own song, your own praise of God. You know, you can take some of the background music of somebody, and listen, I've done it and I do it. I don't know the words to most of these hymns, but man, that you know, I, I, get, I get the beat and I get that in my heart. I'll just put my own words up to date. As far as wild shepherds watch their flocks, as far as who the guy was, as far as correcting the Bible, if I were to do a hymnal, that wouldn't be in it. It wouldn't be in it. So, just trying to help you out. Just trying to get us more gold, silver, precious stones, and a little less wood, hay, and stubble.
But we've got to stop taking this hymnal and look at it as it was handed down by God. Because the Mormons do that. Here's the King James. Listen, the Mormons will give you a King James Bible. You call them up. You write them a letter. Hey, hey, listen, I like to have a King. They'll get you a King James Bible. They'll also get you a slop called the Book of Mormon, which is another testament of Jesus Christ. That's what most of these hymnals are. They're just another testament of man. Now, we saw hymns that are great. We saw hymns that are wonderful. But, there are, listen, this right here, this one is, is we're over 100, number, over 100, number 100. A lot of them, we haven't done 100 hymns yet. And there are just some of them just waste of time. Don't even get bothered. In. And there are some of them that stand up like this one. Now, I'm not going to do every hymn. Like you look at this next one here. Not, we're not, we're not going to do it, but I heard the bells on Christmas Day. You know, I was a little boy one time. I don't know how old I was. And I woke up. I opened up my window. It was, it, was, it was December 24th, coming on to December 25th. You know, I opened up that window, and I wanted to see that Christmas star. I wanted to hear the bells on Christmas Day. Never heard them. I never saw them. I never seen jolly old St. Nick, but them presents were there underneath the tree. Believe me. Some December 24th, Stolly was awake, and he was hiding. See, what you do is you're lying to the children. We got to stop lying. Perverted Bibles are a lie of God. They take what God has said and made it a lie. And that lie is by man and Satan. The biblical truth of our hymns is for one effect. I, I'm not here to pick on these hymns. I wouldn't waste my time. But my time and effort is so that you can look at that hymn that you like and say, oh, I'm doing injustice to my Savior. I'm doing that you can study the Bible to see that's not what the Bible says. I don't expect churches to change. I don't. I expect that if you're to give this hymn out to your song leader, he's going to laugh and chuckle and think I'm... You ever read about the Bible where God, where the Bible says God's going to laugh one day? You're not going to be in good, good standings when God laughs at you. The biblical truth of our hymns is exactly to do that. I don't know how many we've done so far, but I mean, maybe the mid, the thing is, I want to match these hymns to what the Bible says, and if they match the Bible, amen. Listen. Hark the herald angels sing. All right, just take that saying and cross it off to say. That's not hard. And boom. We went through that one. We've got a righteous Christmas hymn in the, in the book. And it doesn't have to be Christmas. Hark the herald angel. That could be sung all through the time. Because it talks about redemption. It talks about the, the new birth. Just remove that sing and put say. Remove the Christmas off it and make it all time. And then there are other hymns that we've already looked at. They need to go bye-bye. They don't need to be sung. And I wonder how many churches between now and December 25th are going to sing what we just sung. I mean, what we just sung. You don't want me to sing. What we just reviewed and studied. If it's against the Bible, if it corrects the Bible, it does not need to be in our vocabulary. It does not need to be in our heart. God's giving you free will. You've heard the truth. I can't force you. 